Hi, Matt McAleer, Director of Equity Strategies at Cumberland Advisors, September 11th, somber anniversary today. Uh, as we head into the close, S&P down about three, three and a quarter on the week. NASDAQ 100 down about five and a half percent. As we've been discussing over the last, really let's call it three or four weeks, markets correct through time, price, or a combination of both. And that's what we're seeing here. If you recall back to three weeks ago on that particular Friday, I shared a chart with you showing that the internals of the market were starting to roll over a little bit. Advanced declines were getting soft, even though indexes the third week of August were hitting uh, year-to-date highs. All that did was tell us to be a little bit cautious. We've seen a pullback now. It's a combination of time and price. The 30-day on the S&P 500 down about a half a percent. So it's difficult to, to get too worked up over the degree of this pullback. Some of the things we like that, that give us some confidence that prices can be bought in the next couple of weeks would be the strength we're seeing in basic materials and transports. Uh, basic materials really going out at 52 week uh, or year to date highs today. Transport, same thing, had been uh, running against their January highs went through just a slight pullback. It's difficult for us to get very concerned about economic ramifications to the market if trannies and basic materials are trading so dry, trading so well. The tech and biotech area, we spoke about that. Trade got crowded. Have to have some supply come into that area. We have a, a list of sectors and names we like. On the tech side, we're not going to ignore software. That's an add-on pullback. On the biotech side, we can look at the large cap index, IBB, or the mid cap, XBI, both in strong uptrends, just pulling back to areas that may be uh, very welcoming for new capital. Remember, we spoke last week. We did raise some cash late August into this. Uh, U.S. ETF sitting at about 15% cash. Tactical trend sitting at about 25% cash. International, about 8% cash. We'll bring international into the story. Traded very nicely this week in the face of some of the pullback domestically here. Uh, when we see that kind of relative strength, we have to pay attention. And it was broad. Not that there was an advancement, there was just lack of panic, lack of deep pullback in the broad international markets. Europe traded nicely. Asia traded nicely. China specifically pulled back into an area that makes a lot of sense to look to commit capital to. Uh, going out today in Asia, Japan trading very well. So there are areas in the global markets that trade well that we need to look to allocate capital to especially strong trending areas on brief, soft pullbacks. Take a look at the differences between some of the performance in the 30 and 90 day. Might surprise you, there are opportunities. Something's always working. Let's speak again next week. If you wanna share any thoughts or ideas, questions on what we're doing in terms of allocations, feel free to reach out through our website or through our YouTube channel. Have a nice weekend. Hi, it's John Musso. I am the President and CEO of Cumberland Advisors and Director of Fixed Income. It is Friday around noon uh, on September 11th, uh, a day that we remember from 19 years ago. And I would urge all of you to try to read David Kotak's piece today that he put out on the Cumberland Listserv about September 11th. It is uh, very sobering. Um, very poignant to remember. I was at the firm that day and remember everything that he describes in there vividly. A um, little bit about fixed income. Saw the treasury market decline in yield this week. Really about a nickel in yield. Uh, 10 year from 0.72 to 0.67. The 30 year bond from 147 to 142. Not much to sink your teeth into. Um, 
you know, a little bit of disappointment on jobless claims, which came in about 884. Initial jobless claims are expecting 850, so slightly higher. I think the good news is, is that they were still uh, significantly under a million. So it's, it's good to see it below that threshold. Uh, we saw a CPI number that was uh, essentially a little bit of a creep up on year over year core CPI from 1.6 to 1.7. Remember that bottomed out after the mess in the spring at around 1.2. Uh, it is working its way back up and we expect to see it between two and two four, which it had been for a number of years. Um, and we expect with all the Fed stimulus, uh, as well as fiscal spending, that that number will probably move higher, but not until you get into next year. Uh, Munis this week, pretty much unchanged. They're about 15 basis points ahead of where uh, the treasuries are. Um, you know, quiet week, not a whole lot of supply because of a holiday week. We see visible supply moving from 12 billion up to 15 billion next week. So now that you're past the Labor Day holiday, traditionally supply starts to build. Uh, we think there'll be some decent buying opportunities in the muni market uh, relative to now as you get in later in the fall. Um, a little bit on a personal note, I'm out in South Dakota on business I went through O'Hare Airport on Tuesday, very crowded. People wearing masks, social distancing, uh, heard the term, this flight is completely full more than a few times on some of the commuter flights leaving from O'Hare. And I think the feeling was one of like back to work, back to school. Uh, and I, I, I definitely get the feeling, certainly being out here in the Midwest, that things are ratcheting up. Uh, it's slow, it's taken a long time, but I think we have definitely moved up uh, the step function, if you will, to a higher economic plane. That is good for the economy. Uh, we will see what the fall brings. So uh, we wish everybody a very good weekend and again, a, a somber remembrance on this September 11th. Thanks a lot.